this is Titan, Titans of CNC, and today we're on the Makino A81NX, and we're going through the process of machining this incredible aerospace titanium part. So in the last video, we got a lot of work done in the center, going through with a one and a quarter inch drill, facing, pocketing, and finishing, and just basically preparing it for today. If you guys are machinists, if you have shops and you're actually running titanium, make sure that you bank the information that we're giving you, the speeds, the feeds, the depths of cuts, what tools we're using for the process, so you can repeat everything that we're doing in your own shops and be successful. And for everybody else out there, if you love what we're doing, please hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, put your comments and ideas below, and you might see it in a future video. So now let's just continue the process, all right? If you actually look into the top pocket, you'll see that we have multiple half 13 threads going through the part. So let's start there by drilling the holes out for that half 13 thread. And this is the drill that we're gonna use to do it. It's a .4219 gold drill from Kenametal. All right, let's make this happen. This specific drill is one that I had in stock. It does not have coolant through, which of course is my preference in titanium, but it's still a three times diameter pecking drill. And because I have experience with this drill in titanium, I know it's gonna work out just fine. So our surface footage is at 85, spindle speed is 770 feet per tooth, 0 0.0035, which is a feed rate of 5.39. I'm gonna actually peck this guy at a half an inch just to be nice and safe, all right? All right, so we just finished with tool seven, drilling all six holes and it went perfectly. So now we're gonna go to tool eight, which is an eighth inch Harvey one end mill. If you actually look at the pocket on the top, we're gonna chamfer the top of that pocket. And if you look at all the holes that we just drilled, they also need a chamfer before we thread mill them. But I'll also say that this intricate O-ring groove also will be chamfered, okay? So that's why we're going straight to an eighth inch end mill. We're gonna come in, we're gonna ramp down into that slot just perfectly, taking all the pressure off of that tool to make a perfect O-ring, all right? And once that's complete, we'll come back with a half inch chamfer mill to chamfer the top of the pocket, to chamfer all the holes, and then go into that O-ring groove to just kiss those edges perfectly. All right, so check this out. Now, one of the things that I'll say about O-ring grooves is like you need a beautiful finish, right? Because it's a ceiling surface. So what I did with this guy was actually come down and ramp into the groove, all right? Now, I did that for a couple of different reasons. One, it's a small end mill and we're machining titanium. All right, so by ramping, starting up here and actually ramping down, never stopping, and then just kissing the bottom, leaving just a little bit of stock for a finish pass, it actually just takes the pressure off the tool and gives you a nice and consistent cut. Now, when looking at my surface foot, you can see that I dropped down to 130. All right, there's a few reasons. One is it's a small tool. Two is we're full width ramping into a slot. So we're not climb cutting, we're actually going full width grooving with it, all right? And at 130, it gives us a spindle speed of 3,973. My feed per tooth is nice and slow, 0 0.0013. I don't care about murdering the material right here. I just care about keeping my tool nice and sharp and having success, all right? Feed rate is 19.86, 
Another thing that you'll see is I usually like where, but in this case, because I'm right in the center, just dropping down, I went to computer. And on the contour style, I went to ramp. And if you actually look at all the different variables, I've turned pretty much everything off. I just wanted to ramp in, finish, and come out. That's it. All right, so we just finished with tool eight, the eighth inch end mill, and the groove looks beautiful. So now that the groove is in place, the holes are in place, the pocket is in place, the center hole's in place, it's going with tool nine, the half inch chamfer mill, and actually deburr and chamfer all of them at the same time. So tool nine is a half inch chamfer mill. It is a 45 degree per side, right? So it's 90 included. I was like, ever since I started machining, I started with like the 45s because they're easy to calculate. If you have the tip on the edge of the material, you just step off 50, drop down 50. That's perfectly 45 degrees. Anything more than that is the size of your chamfer. So if you went down 60,000, so that'd be a 10,000 chamfer etc service foot is at 300 because i'm taking a nice small cut spindle speed is at 2292 bead per tooth is at 0 0.0015 nice and slow because i want a perfect chamfer i want that thing just to look beautiful so i just slowed it down a little bit all right let's go look at our cut parameters now one thing that you'll see is on the top here i left 50 thousandths that means 200 thousandths, right? Because it's a half inch, so half of the tool is 250. Therefore, that's 50. So down here you have 200, meaning I'm using a bigger diameter of the tool, this portion up here, all right? Because I have open space. Now I'm explaining that because I'm actually gonna change it up in a minute. So this guy actually simply clicked this right here to make this chamfer. So I clicked the outside line, which automatically gave me my perfect chamfer, and then took my tip off 0.200. So if I could actually come down in here, we can see that we're chamfering each of the threaded holes and the inner diameter right here from the one and a quarter drill we did previously on the last video. Again, I wanna explain something. You have a big tool and you're chamfering this hole right here and you have this corner right here. Now we gotta make sure that our end mill doesn't actually hit this corner right here. So as I actually come back in here, you'll see that I'm actually still at 50 thousandths. That means that this distance is a little greater than 50 thousandths. And that allows me to just get super close to that edge without hitting, okay? So we're still at 50 thousandths right there, and I'm doing the lead-in chamfers for the half 13 threads. Now watch this one. This is also the same tool, tool nine, but let's look at these parameters, okay? Now, this is no longer 50 thousandths. It went in the opposite direction. So if we have 250 from the tip to the top, and this is 0.2, that means that the tip is 50 thousandths off, okay? Which now allows me to just drop in nice and tight on this little O-ring groove. See it? So that's the difference. You play with the diameter of the tool to make the same tool chamfer and deburr all the surfaces.
All right, so we just finished with tool nine, our chamfer mill, and all the edges look amazing, all right? So now we're gonna come in with tool 10, which is a half 13 thread mill. We're gonna drop inside, we're gonna helical up, drop back down, we'll helical up. a half 13 thread mill boom it's a can of metal it has multiple flutes so basically you drop to the bottom and as you go into the material you simply helical up one time or one thread and then you do a finish pass a spring pass etc to get that perfect thread so it's fast and efficient Surface foot is down at 65. Spindle speed is at 614. Plunge rate, I just put a 25. Feed per tooth is 0.0013, which gives me a feed rate of 3.07. But if you actually look, you can see that my thread mill is very close to the size of my ID drilled hole, the 0.4219, and therefore, it's not moving that much, right? You see how nice and tight that is? So it does one rough, one more, and it does the spring pass again. Now let me tell you something about thread milling. When you go into the parameters here, you can see, now watch, I'll actually click here. This is 13 threads. You can, you can set your different angles. Now watch, watch this one. I like this, right? Because this is what I know from experience. When you thread mill, and you go to the part, like this is a half 13, right? So I take the edge of the thread mill and I go to a half an inch. Rarely will it ever make the thread perfect. You have to overshoot it. And when you overshoot it, you take a chance of actually scrapping the thread, right? So it's something that you have to walk in cautiously to do. Now on this particular part, on a half 13, I went four thousandths per side so it'll overshoot the outside of the thread by four thousandths which per diameter would be eight thousandths all right makes sense by overshooting it you allow a go no-go gauge to actually drop down inside so this number right here depending on what tool you have in your experience start off at zero thread mill it check it open it up thread mill it check it and just make sure that it's perfect make sure you look at the tolerance of the thread as far as your od goes and all of it and just work within those parameters to make sure that you get a perfect thread oh this part is looking beautiful all right so we just finished the threads and then i took the half 13 go no go gauge and i sent the go into the threads and it's such a smooth fit took it out put the no go it does not go the thread is absolutely perfect. And in Mastercam, remember, those extra 4,000s matter here. Overtaking the OD of the thread, that's what made it happen. Oh, all right, all right. So titanium machining, crazy aerospace parts right here on the Makino is going down and I am excited because now all the small intricate work is done. We get to go on to 3D surfacing the entire part. We're gonna show you different techniques and then we're gonna make the entire part look absolutely beautiful. So make sure you check out our next video which will complete the first operation on this massive titanium part. I'll see you in the next video. Boom!